The Google I.O. 2022 keynote is officially in the books, and by a long shot, this is the most hardware ever announced at Google's annual developer-focused event. In the days leading up to I.O., I made some pretty bold predictions about the hardware I expected not to see at the event based on what's happened there in the past. As you might recall, Google tends to be quite light on hardware at this event, and they save that kind of stuff for their full hardware event that's in the fall, and headed into this week, I just felt like the excitement that always builds up and the ramp up to I.O. would just lead to the same old letdowns we normally feel. Boy, was I wrong. And the shift in Google strategy here is a big deal. So let's talk about it. Now, before we talk about all that new hardware, we need to talk about this monumental shift in the strategy from Google. As a hardware company, Google is still in the early phases when we compare them to big guys like Apple or Samsung that have been at this for a lot longer. That means we usually only see one major hardware-focused event once per year, and everything that Google makes is held for that single date. Since 2016, this has been the norm, and each year following, we've hoped for some hardware announcements to happen at I.O., and have always been let down. I suppose the announcement of the original Google Home and Pixel 3a were notable over the past six years, but having two hardware items announced over six events hardly creates any sort of precedent. Now, don't get me wrong, Google didn't abandon what I.O. stands for. Instead, they added to it. The first 90 minutes of the keynote were all about software, and we could talk about that stuff for hours. Between updates to Search and Maps and Workspace and Assistant, Android, Chrome OS, and YouTube, there was plenty being discussed on the software side of things. But then Google did something really different. They introduced the hardware team and let them just take over the show. This wasn't about one new product. It was about a portfolio of devices all built around the Pixel brand that looked to further cement Google as a legit hardware manufacturer. Like Apple and Samsung before them, Google now has enough hardware on the way to talk about it at least a couple times throughout the year. We've said it over and over, but Google I.O. is a huge event that we felt could be used for big hardware announcements, and it looks like Google has finally leaned into that. Like Apple's WWDC, this isn't just a developer conference anymore. It's a place to launch some new gear, too. So let's talk about those new devices, shall we? There are quite a few of them, and if you want to get all the details about all this stuff, you can check out our Google I.O. 2022 in under 10 minutes video. We'll link it in the description or just go over to chromeunbox.com. For this video, I really want to focus and share some early reactions to what Google showed us in the keynote. First up is the Pixel 6a. It's been rumored and leaked all over the place. There wasn't really much new to look at. It's a 6.1 inch phone. It has a similar look to the Pixel 6 and it starts at 449. And Google didn't mention the camera setup in the presentation, but the specs tell the story. It's a 12.2 megapixel camera with a 12 megapixel ultra wide setup and an eight megapixel front facer. Does it sound familiar? It is. It's the older setup that we get in phones like the Pixel 5 and Pixel 5a. With the same Tensor chip inside that the Pixel 6 has, it's now crystal clear what Google is doing with the 6a, and I like it. The price comes down, the camera is not the latest setup, but it's totally proven. You remove wireless charging, put in a 60 hertz 1080p screen, 6 gigs of RAM, and 128 gigs of storage. These are the corners I like seeing Google cut, and it will give users a legit Pixel experience for far less cash and still be great at what you expect from a Google phone. Oh, and it launches on July 21st for pre-order and it ships on the 28th. Next up is the Pixel Watch. Again, this device was leaked all over the place, but it's so good to finally see it in some new videos and on Rick Osterloh's wrist on stage. We didn't get a ton of new info, but all the rumors, leaks, and renders were pretty spot on. The watch looks really great, and if they can keep the price in check, it's going to sell like crazy as the premium Google-made competition to the Apple Watch. The Fitbit integration will be huge for this watch too, giving Fitbit users like myself a more capable, a more premium option for a smartwatch while adding in all the apps and all the Google Assistant tricks you want to see as well. Google gave us no info on the internals or on the pricing, but at least we do have a rough launch date in the fall along with the Pixel 7. Speaking of Pixel 7, Google completely caught me off guard and went ahead and just showed us this new phone. I mean, talk about squashing leaks. The design looks awesome, and really the biggest change here is that they showed the visor on the back getting an all aluminum treatment, and it looks to blend seamlessly with all the side rails, and it's probably gonna make for a much more durable device down the road. No specs were shared at this point, but they did let us in on the fact that we'll see a Tensor Gen 2 of sorts in the Pixel 7. But I doubt that surprises anyone. 
Look, we all knew Google would launch the Pixel 7 this fall, and we don't really need leakers to tell us that. It was also a foregone conclusion that we'd get a second Tensor chip, but what I didn't expect was Google to just come out and confirm all of that at I.O. It was a really cool surprise. Another surprise was the official announcement and release date for the Pixel Buds Pro. This was a thing that I really thought we'd not see until the fall, but I was just way off. Not only did the announcement give us all the details on the new Pixel Buds, it also provided us a date, the same July 20 first 28th purchased order date that we get with the Pixel 6a. The new Pixel Buds Pro, on the surface at least, fix all the complaints I had with the original Pixel Buds. They add active noise cancellation, they get rid of the painful thorn in your ear, and they should address the connection issues that were present in the first version. The most exciting part is the fact that Google is leaning into their machine learning to provide top-notch noise cancellation, better ambient pass-through sound, and improve background noise reduction when you're on a call. If all of this comes together the right way for Google's third attempt at earbuds, we're in for a treat. They're 199 bucks, so that means they start at 50 bucks less than Apple's AirPods Pro, and for me, that's the set Google needs to beat. If specs translate into experience, this could be a really stellar set of earbuds. The only thing I'm left wondering about is if the audio latency for gaming is going to be improved. Even with cheap earbuds, we get better audio latency than the original Pixel Buds. So I'm not getting my cart before the horse on this one. I'm not holding my breath too much but I am excited for these new Pixel Buds. We do have a couple more, and the first of those is a strange announcement of a Pixel tablet that will run Android and won't launch until 2023. The images shown look like a tablet from like 2016, and there were very few details, but the fact that Google's making a complete 180 on its decision to get out of the tablet market is interesting to say the least. What this tablet will end up being will absolutely change over the next year or so, so don't draw too many conclusions on this device yet. I think more than anything, Google wants developers to take a large screen Android tablet more seriously and the fact that they exited the tablet game completely really wasn't helping out in that effort. I suppose a one day down the line pixel tablet helps that? I'm not really sure. Finally there was Google's very early look at what I'd like to call Google Glass 2. That, that's not the name. But what Google showed off in this portion of the keynote really gave me goosebumps. I mean, seriously, the demo they showed was just a mock-up, but the pair of glasses being used by the people on screen was absolutely real, and the results were phenomenal. While AR will absolutely be capable of all sorts of things in the future, the demo Google went with used real-time translation, allowing the person behind the glasses to actually see the language translated in real time in a heads-up display as the other person was talking, letting people who have had issues communicate communicating with loved ones speak back and forth with ease. It was heartwarming and an amazing look at what AR could do for us in the very near future. But guys, that's it for this one, and that's a wrap on all the new hardware stuff that was shown off at Google I.O. So if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, head down there, hit that subscribe button, and make sure and ring the notification bell as well if you'd like to be alerted when we make future videos just like this one. Until next time, we'll see you.